I want to first of all begin, uh, we want to take the opportunity to invite each and every one that's tuning in live tonight. Um, thank you for tuning in to Highest Praise on this Wednesday night service. Um, and I also take the opportunity to invite you to come join us. If you're looking somewhere to go that truly believes in the Bible, and the Bible is the only way that you can overcome what you're going through, then we would love for you to come join us. Amen. Um, you know, I think one of the biggest problems when I thought about this service tonight um, is the biggest problem we've got is ourselves. I mean, you, got, you, you know, if we could get this thing up here straightened out, then we could probably win some of the battles, right? Because, I mean, take a look. Nobody never made me do nothing I didn't want to do, right? Anybody make you do something you don't want to do? No, we have to make decisions. So this message is entitled tonight is how to win over self. How to win over self. And who's self? <laughs> you. Well, one of the, the, the greatest scriptures I have ever really just truly loved is in Luke 9, 23. And as you follow along, as you turn to it in the Word of God, I want you to look at tonight, and I want us to break down a very simple, simple, simple way to win over yourself because uh, if you're like me you know I get in my way all the time better yet I get in God's way all the time because we want to do it ourselves, right yeah. right and and if we're all honest you know we fight that battle a lot every day correct yeah. right and it says in Luke 9 23 and he said to them all listen if any man will come after me, let him deny who? Okay, you got to deny yourself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And now, now listen very carefully. He says you got to deny yourself and take up his cross daily. That means that when you follow Jesus, you know, it's not going to be an easy road. It's going to be a battle because yourself is wanting to get in the way of God's purpose. And that's going to be one of these problems. So, <coughs> excuse me, in order to win over yourself, you've got to do four definite things. And in order to win over self, the first thing you've got to do is um, you've got to have a definite decision. Now, let me explain definite. Definite decision means that um, basically you've got to make a definite decision that you stand by. See, um, Luke said, we just read in 923, if any man will come after me, that's a decision. See, many people have, a, see, the, one of the biggest problems we have this day and time when it comes to that decision is people have difficulty deciding which way to go. A lot of people try to hold on to God, and then on, on one hand, and then Satan with the other. See, let's, I, I'm going to be honest. You know, I, I did that. I tried that. I, wrote, I can write the book on that. But I want you to know you can't do it that way. God's not going to be in a situation if he's not left in charge of it. See, when you make a definite decision, like in Luke 9, 23, says, if any man will come after me, you have to make a decision yourself. Nobody else can't make it for you. We've got to learn to get ourselves out of the way and start following Jesus. And look, as a Christians, as Christians, we follow the Lord through a choice. It's a choice you make. Nobody's going to make you follow Jesus. Jesus is not going to make you follow him jesus is, is is untold us in his word because he is the word right he's already told us in his word follow me but he's not gonna make you he's not gonna say okay i'm gonna give you no choice you're gonna follow me well god could have created a bunch of robots god didn't have to give man the opportunity to choose nothing in fact he give a adam and eve opportunity to choose did he not yeah. i wish our choices was as simple as theirs don't mess with that he just had one thing he wanted them to do because of that one bad decision look 
this entire thousands of years, we've all been making bad decisions. See, that death and decision, if Eve and Adam and Eve would have said, okay, we're not touching that tree. God said not to do it. But they didn't. Who did they listen to that changed that definite decision to a problem? They listened to Satan, the deceiver. Now, that's a whole nother service all in itself, but I don't want to get caught up in that. When we follow the Lord, we must take a choice. In Joshua 24, 15, in Joshua 24, 15, the Scripture puts this particular choice like this. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, now please take notice of this, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers serve that were on the other side of the flood. You know what happened to them, okay? Or the gods of the Amorites. You know what happened to them? In whose land you dwell? That's me something out there in the air. <laughs> it's good. Bless you all. <laughs> it's the message. It's the word. It, it. But listen to what he said. And, and it says, Your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But listen to what he said. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, that is a definite decision that you've got to choose to serve the Lord. People say, well, I, well, I chose to serve the Lord, but I just still have the problems I'm having. Listen, just because you chose to serve Him, there has to be something that changes inside of you. You just can't say, I'm going to serve the Lord, because, listen, Satan's still going to deceive us if he knows that that's all you're going to say. See, we must be firm in our decision for Christ. Listen, firm means nobody can change your mind. You know, we've done so much talk about this. Listen, you are firm in your decision for Christ. If Satan showed up and says, I don't believe you're saved, what would you tell him? You, would, you wouldn't say, well, you know, you might be right. I, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Satan says, well, I, I'm going to tell you whatever, what y'all thought today. I can tell you what some of you said. I can tell you, I, I was in the car when you did this, and you said this. And See, Satan is all about deceiving. But see, let me tell you something. Your decision for Christ, Satan can't take that away from you until you give it to him. You say, well, you know what? How many people have you heard say, well, I must not be saved? Because if I was saved, why am I going through what I'm going through? I tell them, because you're saved. <laughs> Because if you weren't saved, he wouldn't attack you. So what you're going through is, is, is proof of your decision for Christ. We, but we've got to stand on that decision for Christ. See, listen, leaving no bridge unburned which would facilitate turning back. Listen, when you decide to follow Jesus, what did he say? No man that put his hand to the plow and look it back. It's for the what? It's fit for the kingdom of God. What does that mean? Whenever you decide to follow Christ, that mess behind you, it's over. You can't look back and make it better. You can't look back and fix it. But see, it, you, you've got to learn to make that death decision and stand with it. Does that mean other people's going to agree with you? Absolutely not. In fact, a lot of people is probably going to say, Wow, you're one of them religious fanatics. You one of them Bible thumpers, uh, or you one of them Christians that, that think you know everything. Because Satan's going to use all these things to, to put in your face. Do you know why? Because he wants you to doubt your decision. See, I don't care what happens. Until you start doubting your decision, you'll always win. Because as long as you believe, see, in Jesus Christ, as long as you've made a definite decision, and that's how you, the first step you do over winning over self is make a decision that's not about you. See, some people t get offended at what people do and take it personal, but you've got to understand something. The Bible says either God's your father or Satan. So don't take it personal what Satan is doing to you because Satan is doing exactly what he wants to do because he hates you. He hates what you stand for. He hates who, who you are. So who, who is Satan? Is Satan going to stand up and come to your house? I'm Satan. I've come here to buffet you because I understand you're serving Jesus. 
No. He's going to use who to do it to you? People. He's going to use those that's close to you. He's going to use everyone he can, your work. He's going to use all these people to do his work, right? So we don't need to take it personal. We need to realize that whatever's going on, just surrender and say, look, I'm a Christian. Now, I might not have acted like one today. I might not have had to like one a while ago when I had road rage. I might not have had to like one when I blowed it today. Anybody just felt that way besides me? I know I'm the only one always guilty around here. It's a shame. But the thing about it, you're still, listen, you're still a Christian. You still are. And see, Satan wants to throw all this stuff in front of you so you will doubt it. Don't doubt believing who you are. And also, secondly, how to win over self. Secondly, you must have a daring discipline. Daring discipline. Now, the Luke 9, 23, our sentence of Scripture says, let him deny himself, right? It was in Luke 9, 23. It says, let him deny himself. Now, let's look at the problem with what we call daring discipline. The, the problem first lies in that so many people are self-indulgent. A lot of people fail to practice self-denial and restraint. Okay. See, if you don't learn, if you don't learn how to self-denial, if you don't know how to um, discipline yourself, let me tell you what can happen. Satan will run crazy with you. If you don't have discipline, what happens if a child doesn't have discipline in school? Can I tell you, knowing <laughs> daycares and stuff, they will drive you literally crazy. Anybody seen that commercial on television? This woman's want to go on a vacation. One kid, kids, he's swimming in the fish tank. Uh, and, and, and another one's throwing stuff. And I mean, it's like, uh, it's like crazy. And Joan laughed. She said, that's the way they are. That, that's the way they are. And I'm going, <laughs> you know, and, and it's a lack of what? Discipline. See, see, as Christians, if we don't have discipline, we're in a mess. Yeah. We must set rules and limits for ourselves. See, this is one thing I want to be serious as I possibly can. One of the biggest reasons why my life was a total train wreck for so many years as, as someone that was totally lost is because I never learned discipline. Whenever you raise yourself, you learn the hard way or the wrong way. And, and discipline is something you like, well, okay, what's the, anybody ever, you made your bed hard? Lie in it. Okay? We were raised in that territory. And believe me, we had to lay hard. But see, it was a lack of discipline. We must set rules and limits for ourselves as Christians. We win by staying as far from Satan's territory as possible. Listen, we win by staying away from Satan. Okay, is alcohol and drugs and all that stuff, is that Jesus? No, listen, I, I, I have people through rehab centers and stuff um, that were, are alcoholics, and they know that they're alcoholics. But my, I, I, I'm an alcoholic, but I've gone through recovery. I'm just going to go hang out with my friends. Where are you going? To a bar. You're stupid. Yeah. Because you have no business going into Satan's territory, because trust me on this, he is going to find some way to get you back. And see, you know, uh, I was telling somebody about how did she got to understand something. Whenever you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin, whatever it is, guys, Daily repentance. You, 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 anybody not messed up today? What do you do when you mess up? Jesus, forgive me. I, 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 you know, I, 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 I always use this. Lord, you know what I did, so I don't really don't have to tell you, but I'm asking you to forgive me because you already know what I did, so I'm just asking you to give me strength not to do it again. Okay. Repentance is not wanting to keep doing what you're doing, but, here, but here's the deal. See, the thing about it of it is, is whenever you asked him to do that, see, then Satan says, uh-huh. The Bible says if you ask, you shall what? Receive. And he says he will cleanse you from all righteousness. Is that right? So if I ask the Lord to forgive me for something that I've done wrong, is he going to forgive me? 
He is going to forgive me. How far from the east to the west he's going to get rid of it, right? Okay, so what's the problem? The problem of it is, is the lack of discipline. We ask the Lord to forgive us of something, and guess what happens? The Bible says he, will, he, is, he is faithful just to forgive us, which is wonderful. But here's the problem. When we ask him to forgive us, what do we do? We don't go get what we need yeah. to put in place what uh, was taken. See, what was taken out of us, Jesus took out that sin. He took out whatever it is you've come to him for. But if you don't put something in the place of it, the Bible says it comes back seven times worse than it left. Remember when the threshing floor was clean? Yeah. And, and, and they, the, the demons wandered around and, and couldn't find nowhere to go. So where'd they go? They went back to the house and found it what? What's the word? Empty. Yeah. What does that mean? It means that it was empty because whatever you've asked God to cleanse you from, he took away from you. Yeah. But you left it empty. Yeah. So Satan and his little demons running around trying to figure out where to go. So, uh oh, let's go back here. I don't believe since he's asked the Lord to forgive him, I don't believe he's picked up his Bible one time. I don't believe he's fed himself nothing he needs. Let's go back and make us a home seven times worse than it was to start with. That's the Bible. That's, that's how I had to learn the hard way. I kept saying, Lord, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Why am I messing up? He says, you're forgiven, but you're not putting nothing back. So you've got to discipline yourself. Is anybody like to get messed up? Does anybody like keep going on and on and on? None of us do. But we say, well, why do we keep doing it? It's because we don't realize what the Word of God says. We've got to feed yourself. Right? You've got to feed yourself. And what do you feed yourself? Does anybody know what you feed yourself? The Word. The word. How do you feed yourself the Word? You eat it spiritually. You, you, you open it up. And, and so that scriptures, you read so much scriptures that it starts coming to your mind. See, then whenever Satan starts knocking on the door, get the hint, Satan's what is written. I shall worship the Lord thy God. He won't shout that serve. Right? See, you, 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 you equip yourself with stuff, then Satan can't come get back in. But as long as you leave the door cracked wide open, he's going to come back. James told us in, in one twelve. he put it like this in James one twelve: Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. What does endure mean? It means you've got to go through it, guys. You're going you're gonna to go through this. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Now, we're talking about, now, now, now look at this real quick now. Let me see something here. When we're talking about disciplining yourself, he says, um, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. See, how do you endure something? Is that means that you don't give up, you don't quit, you, you don't give in, you don't let Satan deceive you and believing that you can't and enduring means that whatever you're going through you're still going to the word well i'm going to the word but but i'm still fighting this battle it don't matter you keep going in that word until you have a breakthrough you don't never quit you you it, it's, it's satan says look that word must not be working you know what i i and and i'm i'm quoting scripture anybody ever done this i i'll be going through so much sometimes and i and i start quoting scripture over and over and over and over again. And at the same time, I'm still messing up. Anybody think, well, that must just not be working. Let's get real. Anybody ever say, well, well I don't know what's going on. Maybe I got the wrong Bible. Maybe I got the wrong translation. No, what it is is Satan is not going to stop trying to tear you down. And listen, how much is your salvation? How much is it worth? It's worth everything. Don't quit. Because Satan's not, so you keep right on with the Scripture. And I always do. What is written? What is written? What is written? What did Jesus do the whole time in Matthew chapter 4? Every time Satan come after him, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then he said, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Then he said, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And what happens? Look, anybody fasted for 40 days and 40 nights yet? Let me go on and tell you, you won't live through it. Your body just won't do it. But Jesus did to show you one thing. See, Satan attacked him and attacked him and attacked him. And you would think, wow, you know, how much can he take? Jesus didn't. Jesus could have said, Satan, God, take him out. And he would have done it. 
because he's God. But he said, never said anything of himself. He said, it's written. It's written. It's written. In fact, Satan knew so good what was written. What did Satan say? Satan said, it's written. Satan himself said, it's written. What is he? Look, even Satan, his dumb self, told us what to do to defeat him. Claim what is written no matter what you're going through. Jesus, of all people, with all he was going through, no matter how bad he got, and he got bad. you know how I know he got bad? Because angels had to come minister him back into health. After Satan had finished with him, angels came down from heaven and ministered Jesus back to health. What does that mean? He, Satan threw everything at him he could. Anybody ever feel like Satan's throwing everything at you? Listen, Jesus done this to show you. Keep claiming what's written. No, you ain't worth nothing I, in the name of Jesus. Keep claiming what's written. I'm saying this to you so you can win over yourself because yourself is your worst enemy. Thirdly, in order to win over self, third, you need, you must have a daily devotion. We've talked about this. In fact, in Luke 9, 23, our sinister scripture says, and take up his cross, what? Take up his cross, what? What's the cross? The word of God. Look, folks, how many of you are going to go out in 30 degree temperatures? And go to work with no shoes on, no coat. You're going to get dressed and prepared to go. <laughs> well, it all depends. <laughs> the time of life for some folks. But, but bless them, Lord. But the thing about it was is, is see, what you got to do is, you're not going to go out the door unprepared. I mean, if you, if you do... Whatever your job is, you get your stuff ready to go to work, right? If you go to school, you say, well, I'm not carrying my homework. I'm not carrying nothing. I ain't, I'm just not carrying nothing. Well, you're going to go unprepared, right? And guess what? You will lose. My point saying this to you is daily devotional is not an option. It shouldn't be an option, church. See, one of the biggest problems is so many people are devoted to selfish. We're talking about how to win over self, selfish interest. And a lot of people fail to win over self because they neglect God and neglect others in God's Word. See, as Christians, we should be diligent in our devotion to God. Do you know why we should be diligent? Because that's the answer to winning. I I don't know why the world don't get it. You know, we... We're spending so much time figuring out how to make church exciting so that people will just like it. But yet we won't give them what they need to win. Man, I, I, want, to see, I want to see young people win. I don't want to see nobody go down the roads I had to go down because most people don't survive in those areas. And, and as some of us know, in, in the time I grew up in LaGrange, a lot of people I knew died. Because, why? It's because it's, it's with, look, without Jesus, you're fighting a losing battle. And, 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 and churches need to really get back to, look, it, it, as many people as, as I've talked to over the years, no matter what they're going through, and Joan can tell you, no matter what, how bad they were, if I just get them connected to this one thing, listen, I'm, I, you don't have to go to a program. You just need to come to Jesus. But once you come to him, you've got to do a daily devotion with him. He's got to become a part of your life. Yeah. It's, like, it's like in a relationship. Well, I, I want a relationship with you. I'll see you every two years. How's that going to work? Yeah. You got me? That's the way we do God. Well, Lord, I, I, I want a relationship with you. I, I, I need your help. I need, I, I need to win over this stuff that's defeating me. But, Lord, I just really don't want to give you much time. Lord, I tell you what I'll do. I'll give you an hour. I'll give you an hour and a half. Lord, I tell, I'm going to step up my devotion time. I'm going to give you an hour and 45 minutes every week. How's that, God? He said, well, that's about all the victory you're going to get. Yeah. See, listen, how important is it for our young people? I keep looking at them because I love them. How important is it to see them succeed? Absolutely. 
How important is it to see them to be what God created them to be rather than to see Satan destroy them? Let me tell you something. We have what it needs to win. And, and listen, Bible reading should be something we want to do. Why? It's because how many of us wants to start our day off defeated? How many of us won't walk out the door? Well, it's going to be a miserable day. I don't even know why I even got up. It's going to be a miserable day. I've, I, and in fact, I don't know why I'm going here because it's just going to be terrible, 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 terrible. Guess what? It's going to be. Because you've already spoke it. Yeah. But see, if you were to get up in the morning and, and get into God's Word and say, Lord, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I'm going to be glad and rejoice in it. See, we, if we pick up the cross daily, that means we're carrying Jesus with us. And, and I'm telling you, you know, I, I'm guilty as everybody, anybody else in here. I need to pick him up. And the more you pick him up, the more Satan's going to come after you, by the way. So don't think, well, I'm going to pick him up more and Satan will leave me alone. No, 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 no. The more you pick up Jesus, the more Satan's going to come after you. But here's the deal. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in that world. So that means that the more you get a Jesus, the less strength Satan has on you. I'm telling you, church, he can't win that way. In fact, we should be diligent in our, our devotion. Our, Matthew 6, 33 is, uh, let me see that. I've got just a couple more scriptures. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first, everybody say first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? And we know how to, re, we know how to seek the kingdom of God, right? And then we know how to seek his righteousness, right? But if we do this, if we seek it, now we're talking about a devotional. Listen to what he says. And all these things shall be added unto you. All of what things? His promises. Everything that's in here is for you. He said, but you got to seek it. He said, how do you seek it? you got to seek God. How do you seek God? Let me tell you something. You can't get no closer to God whenever you're praying and talking to him. See, and uh, faithful church attendance. Look, I know coming to church is, is, can be an aggravating thing. But let me tell you something. It beats what Satan is probably going to do to you. Daily prayer and Bible reading, plus sharing Christ with others. See, these bring victory over self. And last, and last but not least, how to win over yourself. The fourth thing is dauntless determination. Dauntless. Anybody know what that means, teacher? Dauntless. Non-stop, grab it like a bulldog, you won't let go. You ever seen, a, you ever seen something grab a hold of something just won't let go? Ever mess with a snapping turtle? That joker, once he locks down, hey, look, they had a thing on, and I'm not, I'm not spaghetti, so don't think I am. But I thought about dauntless. I thought about this. They called him uh, um, um Alligator turtles. And they actually said that they actually can take a broom handle and snap it in two. And they were trying to prove last night if that was possible. And they stuck that broom handle in this. And by the way, this, this, this uh, alligator snapping turtle weighed 200 and some pounds. He looked bad. He stuck that daggone broom handle in his mouth and he clumped down that thing and he let go he said look it's not true he can't do it but then he he went back to do something to it the next time he went down on that thing he didn't let go until half of it was gone see that's the way <laughs> now you say he's telling our christian walk is like a snapping turtle's bite well that's determination see luke 9 23 says and follow me See, the problem of it is in this dauntless determination. See, a lot of people fail in their quest for victory over self because they lack courage to reject wrong and take their stand for right. We're living in the most compromised society we've ever lived in. People are compromising for the wrong reasons. Listen, you need to take, we need to take a stand because that's the only way we're going to save our families and our homes. Right is right, wrong is wrong. And you need to stand firm. You need to you need to stand on it. Look, that's honest. I'm gonna be honest. That's one of the reasons why churches are really going through the battles is because people are compromising and they're not that determination 
to stand fast. If you don't believe me, it's, it's a well-known fact, and I've been in ministry a lot of years. I've seen a lot of things going in churches. People will, t- and, and at work, they will get talked to like dogs, treated like dogs, and they'll take it for 30 years. Yeah. They go into a church, and the first thing they don't like, See, we don't have that hold down, bite into. Listen, serving Jesus is going to be a battle. And I tell people, I say, look, all you're doing is switching problems. <laughs> Wherever you go, there's going to be problems. Yeah. It's your determination to stick in there for Jesus. Yeah. And, 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 and I tell people, I said, man, just get in there. As long as the Word of God is in there, and, and, and that's what's being taught, you need to get in there and be determined that you're not going to let go. A lot of people say, well, okay, you know, um, they don't have the courage to say no. You know, my biggest downfall is growing up was saying no, peer pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Wanting to be like everybody else. Yeah. Because I knew if I said no, I felt like I'd be outside them. Yeah. Well, that's the way it is in adult life. Yeah. That's the reason why some of our teenagers right now get into troubles that they get in is because they want to feel like they belong. Well, let's go do something. Well, no, I, I don't believe I'd better. And then they risk ridicule. Yeah. Well, see, can I tell you, Jesus already suffered right. more than we ever will. Yeah. And he paid a price to finish. He said it is finished. That means that he defeated Satan, and he defeated everything he is. See, Jesus suffered the ultimate humiliation. Yeah. And so what we need to do is, is pick up our cross daily, that means we need to pick up the cross and say, you know what? Jesus had no problem denying you, and neither am I. See, we've got to teach that kind of courage and that type of de- determination. We must develop what they call bulldog tenacity. Why did bulldogs get the name, the reputation? Because, buddy, when they locked down on something, it was over, right? A never-give-up attitude, do-it-or-die attitude. That's what you really, as Christians, we need to do. In fact, determination with God's help brings victory in the greatest battle of all. And the last scripture, everybody knows what this scripture is, Philippians 4.13, right? Does everybody know what this is? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Listen, I want you to understand what that scripture says. I can do all things through Christ. That means you win over self when you realize that you've got to have a determination to do it through Christ, not through yourself. You can't fix me. You can't heal me. You can't deliver me. But through Christ, all things is possible. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? See, we win over self when we get self out of the way and allow Jesus to have control. We win over self when we make definite decisions, daring discipline, daily devotion, and dauntless determination. Listen, we need to get serious about this battle. The reason why Satan is actually winning these battles for our kids, our grandkids. We got 18-year-olds. She'll be 18 next month. And, and I'm shocked. Love the Lord. All the young people here love the Lord, but the battles they're facing blows your mind. Yeah. And, and they're facing them in church. Yeah. There's a problem. Whenever we got more gimmicks to bring them in than we do the Word. Yeah. Yeah. The Word shouldn't be boring. If, if I can give, and I'm not on, I'm not, I don't think I'm live. If I can give her what she needs to, to defeat the, the baddest enemy in the world yeah. and she wins the battle yeah. that's the greatest gift you could give her yeah. because see Satan's going to come after us yeah. but if we give them that instead of the other stuff don't get me wrong church should be fun I, I love to make yeah. church fun I love to laugh and have a good time but I also know that you can't win the battle until you get some word in our kids and yeah. hey you get some word in ourselves right i don't know about you but even as an adult that's soon going to be older the thing about it is i need the word every single day and that's the only way we're going to win right get out of the way 
Let God have control. Surrender your will to his will. And read your Bible. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just come before you tonight to thank you for your word. Thank you for your strength, your guidance, your direction, and your protection. And Lord, I pray tonight for each individual in here and for those that were viewing us live tonight. I pray that somehow or another you will pierce their hearts and, and minds and help them to realize that you've already given us everything we need. It's up to us to apply it. Lord, help us to realize we got to do it your way and your way only. We can't have one foot in and one foot out. We've got to be in totally committed to you. Heart, mind, body, and soul. And I pray that tonight, that our eyes will be open to see that you have already given us all we need. It's up to us to follow you. And, Lord, I pray for those needs that have been mentioned and those needs, Lord, that haven't been mentioned, whatever they're going through, whatever they're facing. Lord, I extend my faith. Your word says, thy faith hath made thee whole. So, Lord, I put my faith and each and every one's faith here together. We combine it together. Or two or more come together and we pray for healing, deliverance, and restoration in every need, every circumstance. Everyone right now as we speak, there are young people right now contemplating suicide. Those that's going to do a drug overdose or alcohol. They, right this very minute, thousands all over the world are facing these decisions. Father God, I pray Send somebody there to be a shining light and show them the way to Jesus before it's too late. We love you and give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank y'all. Guys, don't forget, Sunday, Please. Break bread. Uh-oh. An anniversary. So please come. Hey, look, tell, tell everybody to come join us. Please.